Okay, so today we are going to tackle the Van Dusen line. Um, the Van Dusens were one of the first families to settle in what is modern day New York City. So let me back up and first describe what was going on uh, during the settlement of New York City at the time. So in the early and mid 17th centuries, the Dutch were the masters of world trade. I mean, this time period in the early 17th century to about, I don't know, the second, third, you know, the two thirds of the way into it, um, the Dutch were, it was described later as the Dutch golden age, which was really surprising because they were very small, um, but they dominated world trade and they were a republic, which was unusual because you had a world currently being run as monarchies everywhere and the Dutch were a republic. And um, evidently they weren't capable of maintaining that republic because they would end up killing and eating, yes, eating, their prime minister later. There, there's this movie I watched not too long ago called The Admiral, which deals with this point in Dutch history. Um, when this happened, it, it's, it's an interesting movie because it has some great battle scenes. If you like naval battle scenes, you'll like this movie, The Admiral, but it goes into this period in Dutch history, which they probably find shameful. But, um, okay, so what's going on is the, there's the Republic of the Netherlands. The Netherlands uh, in, the, in this period would allow private companies. So for example, the Dutch East India Company, which in the early 1600s, the Dutch East India Company had a charter from the Republic of Netherlands. And the Dutch East India Company paid this English explorer, Henry Hudson, Yes, that Hudson. So lots of things would be named after this explorer, Henry Hudson. Um, you know, the Hudson River, Hudson River Valley, blah, blah, blah. So he got there, they send him over to America. The Dutch East India Company does. They send him over to America to try to find a passage to a Northwest Passage to Asia. That's their goal. So what he ends up doing is he ends up charting that whole region, um, what would later be the Hudson River Valley. And, um, this, he would come back with these charts and this would be the start, this would lay the foundation for the Dutch colonization of this region. So just a few short short years later, after Hudson goes, goes down there, the Dutch West India Company would begin to colonize this region. So um, this is where your ancestor enters the picture. So your immigrant, the immigrant, that's what, <laughs> that's what genealogists always call it. So, you know, when you're, when you're looking at a genealogical chart, the immigrant is the one who first came over. So the immigrant in this, in this line was Abraham Peterson Van Dersen. So he was born in Harlem, Holland in 1599. He's the fifth of eight children and he's in his twenties. He's in his mid twenties about when he boards the ship for America. So he's gotten this plum job as a miller, um, a maker of windmills with the Dutch West India Company. So by 1627, 27, he's in Manhattan. Now Manhattan is named after a tribe of Indians called the Manhattans who they were nomadic, but so it's part of the year they lived on Manhattan Island. So um, by 1627, 27, Abraham's in Manhattan and he has, he is part of this colonization effort by the Dutch and they have called this area New Amsterdam. Um, New Amsterdam would later be New York City, but at this time it's called New Amsterdam. And what's currently New York and New Jersey um, was called New Netherlands, New Netherland. So this is what's going on. So he's one of the first few hundred settlers on the island of Manhattan, which in, in all the charts and maps and stuff, when you look at from the Dutch period, it would it's gonna be labeled Manitus, but that's Manhattan. And so he's described as the first official miller in New Netherland. So you'll see all these drawings and I'm gonna try and attach it to this video, but you see all these old illustrations of New Amsterdam, New Netherland, and there's always a mill. <laughs> There's always a windmill, you know, that typical Dutch windmill um, off in the background. That was built by your ancestor. So um, he was the miller for this 
for this company. So he heads home in the 1630s uh, to marry his bride. I don't even know how to begin to pronounce her name. Uh, Tringy Melchers, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. So, and they marry in Harlem, Holland. Now Harlem, which would later, New York City has an area called Harlem, which is named after Harlem, Holland. But anyway, so they would marry in the Groot Kirk, the great church. So that still exists today, by the way. The Groot Kirk still exists today in Holland and you can visit it. So you can visit the place where your ancestors were married. Now this is where genealogy gets a little less enjoyable because in this, in this era, in this time period, the Dutch used what was called patronymics. And so they didn't have surnames. So <laughs> it's very confusing to try and look through all the documents. Luckily, this Van Dusen line is pretty well documented. Um, it's a large family line and people have done the work for us mostly. Um, so his name, your ancestor's name, was Abraham Peterson Van Dusen. And so Abraham would have been his given name. Peterson means he was the son of Peter, that's his father's name, Van Dusen from Van Dusen, which was the region of Holland, the region of Holland that he was from. So, and that's how they were named. They didn't have surnames. And so it gets really confusing because, <laughs> so in, in all the documents from that time, sometimes he's called Abraham Peterson. Sometimes he's called Abraham Peterson Van Dusen sometimes, well, rarely ever is he actually called Van Dusen, but he'll be called um, Abraham Molliner, Molner, the Miller, which means the Miller. So sometimes he's just called Abraham the Miller, but the Dutch version of that. And even sometimes he's called Abraham Peterson Gorter, which means the Miller of Gort, which was like barley. So uh, he's got all these names that he goes by, but luckily people have already done this work in determining uh, where he was at the time. So he heads home, after he heads home, he gets his bride and they come back. So Abram and his bride are back in the Americas by 1636. And we see from records that he has taken possession of this island in Narragansett Bay uh, for the Dutch West India Company. He's just claimed it uh, for the Dutch West India Company and he runs a trading post there. It's near Rhode Island, it's called Dutch Island. It still is kind of known by that term. Um, he claimed it for the company and then he operated a trading post there, which I think was really brave because they were not behind um, the walls of Manhattan at the time. They were out by themselves. He's with his family out uh, really vulnerable to Indian attack, which was very, very common in those days. A lot of people were killed by Indians. You had a lot of ancestors killed by Indians. And let me go, just quickly say, I know that Indians is not the PC term that um, we're supposed to call them Native Americans. I say them, but I have Creek Indian in me. You guys have Cherokee Indian in you. Um, but I'm going to continue to call them Indians just because the term Native American can be confused later with with other, other terms, other people that I might want to describe. So um, we're going to continue to call them Indians. Indians, but I don't mean any offense by that, so just be aware. So, and he ends up, he sets up this trading post where he is trading uh, with Indians, probably mostly furs, beaver pelts. Um, that was one of the big things they traded back then. So he set up this trading post and he did a lot of trading with Indians at the time. So by 1638, he is back in New Amsterdam working as a miller. Um, during this time, we have it on record that he's He's giving and tithing money towards the maintenance of the wall. Now, back in this time period on the island of Manhattan, they had a wall that ran around one side of it to protect them from Indian attack. And this, this would later be called Wall Street, which I would work on, 60 Wall, how cool is that? So it kept out the hostile Indians and this later becomes Wall Street. He signs leases that give him the right to farmland on the Bowery, which is the Dutch word for farm, which, <laughs> see, this is, this is when genealogy gets fun because I used to live on the Bowery when I was broke and I first went to New York. 
I was making $18,000 a year, if you can imagine, and living on the Bowery in a, in a renovated Chinese brothel. So anyway, I lived on the Bowery. Who knew? I didn't know at the time that that was actually Dutch for farm and that your ancestor probably farmed on the area where I was living in my Chinese brothel. So in the 1640s, he's living on De Breedway, the wide road, uh, the main road, also known today as Broadway, um, and he's operating a tavern. So he's still a miller during this time, um, but he's also operating a tavern. Now we know he's an important man in Manhattan because he serves on the Council of Twelve. The Council of Twelve was a group of local leaders convened to advise the director, who was Keith, on what to do about these deadly Indian attacks. And then later they would convene again, and this would be the Council of Eight, so even less guys. Um, there were some really deadly Indian attacks going on, and they would meet in 1641, 1643, this Council of Twelve, the Council of Eight, and he was one of them, and they would give advice to the director for the West Dutch West India Company, who was Keith. Well, Keith didn't even listen to him and ended up getting them involved in this horrible, disastrous Indian War. Well, the Dutch West Indian Company would, would get rid of Keith um, and they would replace him with a well-known man uh, that you may have heard of, which was called Peter Stuyvesant. Now, Peter Stuyvesant would be the director general of New Amsterdam or of New Netherlands from 1647 until it was ceded over in 1664. Now, Stuyvesant, you can always recognize him from all the illustrations of that time period because he had a peg leg. So sometime in his younger years, he was in a naval battle with the Spanish and a cannonball shot his leg off. And so he has this peg leg. And so whenever you see the illustrations, you can always spot Stuyvesant because He's got a peg leg and he'll be, you know, his face will look totally different um, in all of these different illustrations, but you'll be like, oh, that's Stuyvesant, he's got the peg leg. So what, what ends up happening is that the Brits, who by this time have colonized to the north of New Netherland and to the south of New Netherland, and they're like, you know, these guys are really in our way. We're just going to take it. So they go and they do. They just take it. And the Dutch seed it over without, you know, there's not a shot fired. They just seed it over. So the Brits take it over and they change the name from New Amsterdam to New York, named after the Duke of York. And they change New Netherland. Um, they split it into two and they call it New York and New Jersey. So that's what happens to that region. But I, it was just so much fun learning about the history. I, I know some of you have lived in New York, maybe still do. And, um, and it's just fun to know that there's all this Dutch history in New York and that Harlem is named after Harlem Holland. And that, you know, so what would happen is that Abram and his wife would end up having quite a few children. And in fact, their, their dynasty, so to speak, of all of these people that are Van Dusen descendants, yourself included. But the, um, the descendants of the Van Dusens include President Martin Van Buren, FDR, of course. You guys are related to FDR like three different ways. So um, <coughs> his son, Melchers, Melchers Van Dusen, um, they, got, they got rid of that, that way of naming, by the way. Uh, it was only like a couple generations in before, before the Dutch finally got the clue and started to have surnames. And so they named themselves, you know, so their surname became Van Dusen, um, and they just dropped the rest of it. So... Um, Anyway, the son, Melchers, he would marry this, this gal named, oh, what was her name? I can't remember her name, but it, it was something, Angelica Rutgers, uh, Van Schunderwert or something. But anyway, it had the name Rutgers in it. So I'm thinking to myself, Rutgers, I wonder if that has anything to do with the university. Um, was that founded by some Dutch person named Rutgers? Yep. So I look it up. So this, this is what ends up happening when you do this genealogy stuff. You get, you get pulled off down all these rabbit trails. So um, I'm like, Rutgers, Rutgers. So I look it up and sure enough, Rutgers was founded by this uh, colonel in the American Revolution who was named Rutgers, Henry Rutgers, I think. And he descended from the Rutgers who originally colonized New Amsterdam back in the 1600s. So is the wife of... Melchers Van Dusen, 
of that same family of Rutgers? Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, 